In this video, I want to talk about some best practices about using the HTTP client from a .NET application. We're going to talk about service discovery, resilience, typed clients, named clients, and when you should be using which one. So let's dive into the video and I'll show you what you need to know. So here's the sample application I'm going to use for this demo. And it's a simple API with two get endpoints. The first endpoint allows you to get the user. And if you look inside, you'll see that this is actually integrating with the GitHub API. We're also providing an API key as a query parameter in order to authenticate with the GitHub API. And the second endpoint allows us to fetch the public repositories for the authenticated user. So if I run this application, and there's also a client app inside of the source code, which which you can run using a local HTTP server. So here's what the client application looks like. I have an input here where I can enter my access token. You can obtain this value from your GitHub profile. And once you click connect to GitHub, assuming you provided a valid access token, you'll be able to load your GitHub profile. And you can click on the load my repositories button and you get a list of all of your public repos sorted by date of creation. So that's just a simple UI app so that you have something to work with. But I want to focus on the backend and specifically the usage of HTTP client. So let's try to identify a couple of things that aren't ideal about the current implementation. So you can see we're using the HTTP client factory to obtain an HTTP client instance. And one thing I see here is we're not disposing of the HTTP client. Then every time we want to send a request to the GitHub API, we have to set the respective headers. We're also hard coding the base URL and the specific URI that we are calling. Our responses aren't strongly typed. Instead, we are deserializing into an object type and returning that from our API. And the last issue, which isn't specific to HTTP client usage, is providing the API key through a query parameter. So we're going to fix all of these, but let's start one by one. So the first thing you could do is dispose of the HTTP client when you no longer need it. The HTTP client factory already takes care of some reuse of the underlying message handler, so this isn't too big of a concern. However, it's still a best practice to wrap the HTTP client instance inside of a using block, or in my case, an inline using statement. Then the next thing we can improve here is some of the default request headers and the base address. For this, we can introduce a named client and you do this by registering an HTTP client by saying builder services add HTTP client and you just specify the client name. Let's call this the GitHub client. And what this allows you is to provide a delegate where you can access the HTTP client instance and apply some defaults. So in our case, we want to add the default request header. So let's say HTTP client default request headers, and I'll specify the user agent. So now I'll get rid of that in the API endpoint as well as this API endpoint here. What about the API key? Well, we can't move this into a centralized place because we are providing it dynamically at runtime, but we can set the base address to HTTPS API GitHub.com. So now I can simplify the code in my endpoints and omit the base address entirely. And I can just specify the URI that I'm calling, in this case, a user. And in this example below, we are fetching the user's repositories. One mistake I see here is I specify the sort parameter twice. So I'm going to omit the first one and only sort on the created property. Now, how do we actually get the named client instance? Well, when we call create client, we can also specify the client name. So you can see there's an overload for that. And let's also do that in the above endpoint and specify our name client. And now we are using some default settings like the base address and the user agent header. So just to quickly check if this works, go ahead and start the application. And from the user interface, you can connect to GitHub and load the user's repositories. And you can see that we are still getting the results back. So, so far, so good. Now let's go back to the code. And I want to talk about another type of HTTP client that we can use inside of a .NET application next to name clients. And this is called a type client. So using name clients is a bit verbose because you still have to resolve the HTTP client and then know which request headers to set and which endpoints to call. How type clients solve this is that you can define them with a class or an interface. I'm going to use a simple class and let's call this the GitHub client. Inside of this client, we can inject an HTTP client instance and this is also going to be a pre-configured one. And then we can expose some API endpoints such as an endpoint for fetching a user. So I'll say, public async task let's return an object and let's call this get user and the only argument that we're going to need is the api key now this could fail so we can make the response nullable and the code we're going to need 
is this part here starting from setting the authorization header up until returning the result of this endpoint so let's paste this here and we're going to update this to use the http client to set the authorization header and also call the respective endpoint now if the response is a success status code we want to return the raw content another way we can solve this is by saying response ensure success status code and in that case we don't need to check if this was successful or not because it's going to throw an exception if it's not successful and let's say if we run into an exception we can return null and we could possibly log the error so now we have a more concrete interface that we can use to obtain a resource how do we configure this well you can also configure it as another http client so you say builder services add http client and notice there's an overload that accepts a generic argument and i'll specify the name of my client i'll say github client and i can again provide a delegate to configure the client instance. I'll do the same thing as I have above, setting the base address and also configuring the user agent header and everything else remains the same. Now, how this actually works under the hood is there's a name client that's going to be registered using the name of our type as the name of the name client. So it's functionally identical to the above approach, except you get a strongly typed client. Now you can also extract an interface from this class and register this with an interface. Let's say I GitHub client and then the implementation similar to how you would register any other service and then you can use the interface inside of your endpoints now i won't be doing that i'll take a dependency directly on the github client so how this changes my code is now i have the github client here so let's specify that and i can somewhat simplify my code into github client we call the one endpoint that we have which is fetching a user and we just pass in the api key then we can say if response is not null we can return the response directly otherwise we can return something like results not found and i can also invert this if statement and let's say if the result is null we're going to return not found otherwise i'll return 200 okay and the contents of my response so now i'm using a typed client and the code is a little bit cleaner let's do the same in the second endpoint so i'll add an endpoint here let's make it public async task it's again going to return an object for the time being and i'll call it get repositories it still needs an api key and again we'll copy the code from our endpoint and adjust it slightly so let's go back to the client i have to set the http client request header and we'll call the same endpoint as before so going from the example above we want to ensure that we are getting a success status code and we are deserializing this into an object and in case of an exception i want to return null and we can possibly log an error how this changes our api endpoint is this now becomes the github client let me specify the name of that and then i'll say github client get repositories let's remove all of this and we just pass in the api key now where i actually wanted to place this was here so let me update that and then I can get rid of the using statement and going from our example above if the response is null we return results not found otherwise we return results okay so to test out if everything is still working let's just quickly start the application and recheck our user interface I'll again try to connect to github you can see I'm getting the profile back and I can still load the repositories for the current user so our refactor still didn't break anything which is a good sign so far now the next thing I would recommend is making your http client responses strongly typed this is a really good use case for ai you can check out your network requests take an example response that you're getting from the api in this example a user or the list of repositories and just pass that to an llm and ask it to create a type i'm going to drop in the types here which i created using an llm so here's a github user using system text json and the respective attributes for properly mapping from json to the object as well as the github repository which you can see here and then you can see the structure that we have inside so how do we use this well i can update my serializer to return a github user here instead of an object and i also want to update my api endpoint to use a github user below i'll update this to return a list of github repositories and we'll also update our api endpoint to do the same nothing really changes in our minimal apis everything still checks out and let's again start the application to test if this is working i'll add the access token again and this time i have my network tab open to show you what happens when i try to send a request so you can see there's a request to fetch the user from my api and then here is my json response so even with my refactor to use a strongly typed object 
everything still checks out. If I try to load the repositories, you can see an API call here, and then it contains a list of repositories and the response, which I'm rendering on the user interface. And now our solution is looking much better. Now I want to point you to a couple more best practices that I think you should be aware of. And if you didn't know, I'm using .NET Aspire for orchestration in this solution. And one thing that Aspire introduces is this add service defaults call. If we go inside, there's actually a couple of pieces of code that are relevant for our usage of HTTP client. One of them is support for service discovery, which allows us to assign a logical name to some service that we want to call over HTTP. So we can utilize this inside of our clients and not have to depend on the API address of the github api at all i'll show you how in just a moment the second thing is this call here to configure the http client defaults and this introduces a standard resilience handler which is going to introduce a couple of resilience policies for every http client request that you send from your application this isn't too obvious when most of our requests succeed but it definitely comes in handy when you run into a failure with a downstream service the second thing is we're turning on service discovery for the http client together with the service discovery services let me show you a cool way of how you could utilize this i'll go into my aspire app host and as of recently there's a way to add an external service as an additional resource so let's say the external service is called github api and what we can do is assign a uri for this service we were previously assigning this here when setting the base address for my application and i can just add this value for this resource then i can say with reference on the api project and pass in my github api service so let's call it github api and i'll add the reference to my api project and now this should create the respective environment variables which are going to allow me to use this with service discovery which means i can now reference the name of this service and not the actual physical address so inside of my configuration for the http clients i can specify the name of my service github api as well as here instead of the actual physical address now i extrapolate this to a more complex example where you're working with many other external services for example stripe or paypal api or some microservices in your system that you don't own and you can't run from aspire yet until we get polyrepo support but that's a bit besides the topic this is going to simplify your integration so let me try out this again and see if i didn't break anything and now if i go into the aspire dashboard you can see i have another resource the github api along with its physical address in my actual .NET api project there is now a reference to the github api you can see the resource reference here and if i go into the environment variables i should see an environment variable here that shows me the physical address of the service and then this is what we need for this to work with service discovery so if i go back to my user interface and i send a request to load the user's profile as well as their repositories everything still works and if i jump back to aspire and check out the distributed traces you can see the two api requests i sent the first one to fetch a user which is sending a request to the github api service and this is actually resolved using service discovery so this is now going to route the request to the proper downstream service this also happens in the second request here for fetching the repositories and if you look at the structured logs you can see some logs from the resilience pipeline like a standard retry here or what the request flow looks like note this line here which is stating that we are sending the request to github api our logical name from the service and then the next structured log is sending the request to the physical address after resolving the physical address using service discovery if you want to learn more about how service discovery works with dotnet aspire i highly recommend that you check out this video next make sure to smash the like button for the youtube algorithm so this video gets shown to more.net developers thanks a lot for watching and until next time stay awesome